Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening for another very special edition of WOWS Alive with our host, Ned Dennison. Ned? Hello, everyone. I'm the chairperson of the International Marathon Swimming Hall of Fame. We have the famous Dan Simonelli from uh, Southern California with us today. Dan, will you say hello, please? Hello, everybody. Good morning. Bright and early here, anyway. Uh, Dan, I, before we get into your incredible contributions to the sport, I, I want to acknowledge your pedigree as a marathon swimmer. Um, so 14 marathons, including the English Channel, Catalina, and, and the four days of SCAR. Um, talk to us about just one of those swims in particular, the kind of uh, the infamous one around the North Shore of Molokai. <laughs> oh, well, that actually was, that wasn't mine. That was a relay uh, with the kids group I was coaching uh, for several years. And uh, we had gone over there to um to do a relay across the molokai channel uh, Ka kaiwi channel and um it uh it didn't work out we um you know was we were, got blown out with the weather um so i had to make a quick course correction um and think of another swim and um you know i was talking to evan morrison and thinking about what we could do um as an alternative swim and we were staying on molokai with the group, <laughs> much easier than, than staying uh, on the other side, um, Maui. Uh, and uh, so I decided to go from the tip to tip on the west end of uh, Molokai, and you know didn't seem didn't uh, find that anybody had done it. So uh, we started out. It was the intention was to go back and forth, um, just to do a comparable distance. Uh, as I recall, it was maybe about 14, 15 miles uh, one way. So we went, across, we went one way, it was great. Um, you know, the swells uh, were there and chop was there, but everybody did well. And we got to the other point. And when we turned around and started heading back, started noticing, hey, we're not making much progress. And we were, we were just getting pushed out into the channel, the open uh, channel and um, just couldn't fight our way back. We did it for about three, three and a half hours. And uh, we just kept on getting farther and farther into the in the channel, huge swells and uh, you know breaking breaking waves, uh, and you know swimming wise it was actually okay. We could swim in it, um, and everybody did you know okay uh, swimming in it. Besides getting pushed backwards, uh, but you know the the boat was it was crazy on the boat and it was very dangerous. It got to be dangerous with getting you know people on and off the boat with the relay. So we had to call it. Um, so, each, but, so each relay swimmer jumps in the water thinking, I'll show you how this is done. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> With the big waves. So, so that was a great experience. That was good. I mean, it, it was nice to be able to at least get something uh, in for the experience and the trip um, rather than, you know, getting just blown out and having to go home. How did you first start getting involved in all of the crewing and coaching for marathon swimming? Uh, I, I got back in the water in 2009 and started swimming uh, back in La Jolla Cove and it just happened uh, to be with uh, a group of swimmers um, that were training for, for Catalina and uh, mostly um, like Barbara Held and Kevin Anderson and Cindy Walsh and Jim Fitzpatrick. And um, they, uh, they were involved in it and I just started, you know, training with them, but I didn't do any of the long swim. I didn't tend to swim long. I was just, you know, swimming along, getting back in the water. Um, but in 2010, 2011, I started observing uh, with Catalina Channel Swimming uh, Federation. And uh, so I got into it that way first. And um, in 2011, uh, Carol Singh, uh, was putting together a relay. She's the relay queen and was putting together relays. And uh, she was putting together a relay to circumnavigate Catalina. And um, and Barbara asked if I uh, wanted to, you know, join and uh, be her swimming partner. It was a two-person team um, or a two two relays. Um, so you swim with a partner. And uh, And I went for it and I was, oh my God, I was just, I was hooked. And I always tell Carol that I like, you, you know, you really sucked me in and, and got me started with that relay. And that really I hadn't turned back from then, um, really got more involved. And then the following year, uh, Gracie, Gracie Vanderbilt um, called me, I was already observing and 
but she said, Hey, we need a kayaker, you know, for a swim. Somebody needs a kayaker. I'm like, I don't know. I mean, I've kayaked a few times in my life, but I don't know what, <laughs> what that's all about. Okay. Okay. I'll do it. I'll do it. I'll go for it. And then I love that. So I just really kept on, um, at first, I was borrowing kayaks. You know, Tom Hecker was always nice with you know, uh, lending his kayak, and um, and then uh, you know I just started getting more involved with uh, with supporting swims, um, and and then my swimming just increased, and and I just kept on going. And the first thing for me was uh, Scar. Um, my friends had done it that kind of that first official year in 2013. And they came back and just had awesome stories. And I didn't know Kent. And I, I just, I got on the email right away. I got his email and I said, Kent, oh my God, it sounded so awesome. I want to do it next year. So um, it was 2014. Uh, I, you know, got it together. I just thought it was going to be, you know, too much and just too big. I mean, four days in a row and all those, sw all those distances, never done anything like that, of course. And, um, but you know, I trained for it. It went well and, and, uh, did well and, and just kept on going. So. So at this point, Dan, I, we were, we're kind of tallying up the numbers. We think you've been involved with more than 200 Catalina and Santa Barbara swims in the last seven, eight years, including just a recent one. Um, just first of all, tell us about the one, you know, a few days ago as a, as the, the, the most current one, you know, what went really well, what, what didn't go so well. Yeah, it was, uh, it was last week and, um, 14 year old, a uh, special young swimmer. Um, and she, uh, she's just new to the sport and, uh, she lives up there in, in LA and she wanted to, uh, swim Anna Kappa. Uh, and, uh, I, I just had met her. Uh, she came down to La Jolla the week before and, um, you know, just realized, you know, she's very mature and, and uh, very intelligent, you know, and very motivated. And, uh, and so, you know, we <clears throat> went for a swim. That's always, you know, a good way to learn about each other, right? So we went for a swim together. And, uh, but the, you know, she was, she was really prepared in a lot of ways, but just new to the sport. Uh, she just didn't really have uh, any guidance or training in terms of, uh, her coaching or, or getting prepared. So, um, and just being young, I mean, she just doesn't have the experience overall, but she's a really good swimmer, been, you know, competitive pool swimmer. And, uh, so it, it started out really well. So her first half, she was halfway at about three hours and, um, it just started getting really choppy. Uh, the wind was just pushing us off, um, you know, coming from our right, pushing us left. And, and, you know, you never know with Anacapa, as you well know, it's, it, it can be, it's, it's 12 miles, but it can be a long 12 miles just because of the conditions and the current. Um, you never know what they're going to be doing around the island. And so, um, yeah, the second half was, was a long slog. Uh, it ended up being about, I think, nine hours, 20 minutes or something, uh, almost nine and a half hours. So yeah, second half uh, was killer. And um, but she, you know, she kept on going, uh, the water temp was colder than expected. We've had some weird fluctuations here along the coast, um, uh, with, t uh, water temperature changes and it was just on a downturn. It started out about 57 degrees for her. Um, but she, you know, she plugged along, kept going, you know, I kept her going in the kayak. Um, and, uh, and then, you know, we wrapped around the end and you had to fight back. But once you get behind that we were behind the wind a little bit sheltered by the island we could you know make our way into the to the other side uh tip of the island so that's how we, we got it done um but so, but so young, were, young, learned a lot <laughs> so young swimmer halfway across in three hours yeah second half is six hours and she misses the island yes that's always that's always fun good for <laughs> your psyche and then she has to swim back uh, and now that she's gone past the island, she has to swim back to the island. Was that into the sea lion colony or the other side? The other side, yeah. So it was okay. pretty well. I mean, we had a boat to contend with, but other than that, a fishing boat. Uh, yeah, that, that's it right there. I mean, missing the island, you're so close. I mean, you're only about a quarter mile away and you're just getting pushed. And um, 
yeah, it, it's definitely a mental, big mental game um, all that way. So she got a she got a real first big marathon experience then. Yes, yes, she did. <laughs> yeah, my my favorite on those swims is where the captain says to you, "Oh, by the way, it might freshen up towards the end of the swim." You know, <laughs> translation: it's all going to pack in at the end. There's going to be big waves, and the wind is going to be against you. Yeah, exactly. Dan, tell us about some of the inspirational stories. Um, I, I read that you took a, a group of teenagers with disabilities on, on a number of relays around the world. Yeah, I started working with this, uh, this group of this micro school, a group of kids um, with different, uh, different issues, uh, not, in, you know, not doing well in conventional education settings uh, for various reasons. Um, they were coming to the Cove, Slohoy Cove, and I met them there. Um, they were coming once a month. And so I started helping them out with that at the Cove, just volunteering. And, um, and then after, I don't know, several months, I started realizing, God, these guys don't really realize, you know, what they're achieving here. So I started talking to the parents and, um, and then Cheryl, Zach, the director, the owner of the school, um, she started asking, you know, what can we do? What else can we do? And I was already involved. This is 2014. I was already, you know, involved with Catalina stuff. And I thought, God, could they do relays? Um, and uh, in that interim time over a couple months, the kids latched on to, on, found online Sharkfest and Sharkfest Alcatraz. And so <laughs> I was like, okay, well, maybe that'd be, and, and these swimmers, I mean, they swam all year round, but they were, you know, head to toe neoprene who had you know uh, hoodies booties gloves um everything so uh i got that together for for alcatraz we all went up to san francisco it's about at that time maybe 16 kids um and i wanted to see if you know how that was going to go and it went off without a hitch you know everybody finished and it was great experience and I thought, oh, well, okay, well, maybe we'll <laughs> see how it goes with Catalina. So I arranged Catalina, two relays. Um, and uh, so swimmers had to swim side by side, the two relay teams, six people each, each team. Um, and again, I mean, it was just all, oh my God, is this, you know, are they going to be able to do this? And I mean, these are kids are never been into sports, you know, a few autistic kids, uh, you know, a lot of behavioral issues. Um, and, uh, you know, just it's a good testament to uh, routine and and the, the discipline you build and and just doing uh, repetitive um, training and um, you know they they were fairly good without uh, certainly with a lot of outbursts and stuff but they were fairly good at uh, following instruction and and um, and Catalina you know went off great and you know there was a lot of typical things that go wrong in a swim, but they did it. Um, it was great. And I kind of thought that would be it. And Cheryl goes, well, what's next? And I go, I, I, English channel, I, don't, <laughs> I guess. And um, I was already, you know, friends with Chloe McCardle and, um, and uh, we had kind of stayed in touch after I was observer on her Cuba attempt. And um, she got wind of you know, just we stayed in touch a bit on social media and Facebook and she got wind of by doing this and she was doing her coaching and she goes, Oh my God, let's, let's converge on Dover and do, uh, do kids relays. So she had a school that she was working with there and she brought a couple relay teams and I brought, you know, this school over and we converged on the uh, end of Dover on uh, 2015 and did, uh, did a couple relays there and it went well. And then Cheryl asked again, what, what's next? And so that, that's kind of how it's gone. We, you know, I, I like this Cheryl woman. I like yeah, her. Yeah, you'd, you'd love her. She's <laughs> intrepid leading the group of intrepid kids for sure. And then uh, we ended up doing, um, uh, went to Molokai to try that. And uh, we, um, we did a couple long Santa Barbara swims. We did uh, the name of the school at that time was Arch Academy. And there's an Arch Rock at Santa Barbara Island just which is just off the west end of Catalina and all the way to uh, Anacapa Island Arch Rock um, or the Arch Anacapa Island so we went arch to arch um, that's about 41 miles just open ocean and that was amazing experience took us to recall maybe 27 hours 
Um, and uh, we did that. We did a Santa Rosa Island uh, to the mainland. I think that's about 27 miles, 28 miles. Um, and then uh, we went to Italy. We did a, 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 between two islands in Italy. Um, and and we're, the, the school has since closed uh, last year, just enrollment reasons and whatnot. But uh, look, there's a core group that want to continue. Uh, some of the alumni and, and the last few kids that were in the school. Uh, and we're looking at going to Croatia next year. Um, we had that idea. This is a funny coincidence and serendipity. We, I had that idea before because you hear such awesome things about Croatia. Um, and I'd looked into it a little bit, asked some friends over there, you know, in England and whatnot, people that had swum there. And um, it, it just, it was pretty complicated. And Edie Markovic, the 14 year old that just did Anna Kappa, her family's from Croatia. I'm like, oh my God. So that just recently just rejuvenated the whole idea. So we're, we're pumped. She wants to do some swims over there and uh, um, just off a of split. There's some islands there. Her, her, one of the islands off a of split is her mom's home island. And uh, um, so, yeah, we're getting that together for, for next year. Hopefully, you know, if all this COVID kind of subsides. So, so t teenagers with, um, autism, some developmental issues. Th these are kids that are a real risk for, you know, poor self-esteem and, 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 and maybe never come out of that their whole lives. You know, talk to us about the difference you made in their lives. You know, the smiles, the confidence, the sense of purpose. You know, have any of these kids gone on to earn a PhD and get the Congressional Medal of Honor or something? I mean, is it, is it too early for any of that yet, Dan? It's a little early for that, but yeah, several of them have gone on to, you know, major schools, you know, uh, NYU and uh, uh, Michigan and, um, you know, yeah, so the, a lot of them are doing well. Um, it, it's hit and miss with these kids, you know, it really is on the flip side, you know, some haven't done so well. So, but you know, to answer your question, when we had them in the program, so to speak, uh, it was night and day. I mean, Cheryl would tell me, because I'd only see them a few days a week, you know, swimming, but, um, you know, I, when I'd go and visit the school or, or for whatever reason, um, Cheryl would say, oh my God, you don't, you don't even, you don't even know the difference. I mean, they're just so much more focused at school, you know, less outbursts, less fighting, less, you know, just it was, she was documenting it, you know, for her school and for her field. Um, just the, the swimming and the, the regimen uh, was doing wonders. And it, it also um, is really telling that this good, you know, good core group, I, I'd say overall with the turnover of kids, it was, you know, probably, you know, 30 altogether, maybe, you know, 20 something. Um, and, uh, you know, a good half of them are, are still into swimming or they still want to do this relay. And uh, so, you know, really made a difference uh, absolutely in their lives, for sure. Let, let's go to the other end of the scale. Um, you were involved in uh, Antonio Reyes's uh, two-way Catalina. Antonio, uh, an honoree of the International Marathon Swimming Hall of Fame, very experienced. T tell us a little bit about the professionalism and focus of a, somebody like an Antonio compared to the average swimmer? What, what, you know, what are the, the things that just jump out at you? You know, he's, he's prepared. Uh, he just, his preparation is, is uh, it's, it, it, it's the epitome. I mean, it's, it's what everybody should emulate. He, um, he's got an amazing team around him. And, uh, you know, I'm honored and privileged to count myself in that as, as being his, uh, his, his kayaker. Um, but just the support team around him and the, the way he can just trust and rely on them. Um, for his double Catalina, for instance, um, you know, we had planned it uh, around the tide, some trends that I had noticed over the years. Um, and with the uh, ebb and flow of the um, flood of the tides um, having some effect on the current um, cycling. And so, you know, we planned that and um, but his his planning one good example of it is you know mentally for a double um you know you have to think about the first half just being you know your warm-up so to speak you, there's no question you're going to turn around and what he did 
to plan for the turnaround, the 10 minutes that he had on the, on the beach at Doctors Cove there on the island uh, was he set it up. So he, he did it in two minute segments and we practiced this. We practiced it on, on land and, and uh, uh, beforehand. Um, and he did several times, um, but he, he did it in, in four two minute segments. So he had eight minutes worth of just, um, he had, I set it up. I went ahead on the, on the beach and set it up on a, had a yoga pad and, and everything. And, and two minutes, um, you know, with, with eating a little bit, drinking a little bit, two minutes with, um, uh, you know, a little, he was doing some, um, palpating and, uh, self-massage and, uh, two minutes of meditation. Um, and so he just had it dialed in. And so that I'd been on several other doubles, double attempts. And, um, that was just, we just sat there on the beach and just all quiet, uh, and just really preparing. And when we, he slipped back in the water, there was just no doubt that it was at the sun was coming up, um, beautiful sunrise and it just made for the transition. It, it was relaxed. It was, it was right on target. It was, um, it was perfect. And, uh, you know, the preparation, what that says about preparation is, is huge. Uh, and, you know, he ended up doing 12 hours over and 12 hours back and it was like a perfect swim. So I, I would, I would, uh, remind the viewers, we did an interview with, uh, the famous, uh, honoree Isa, Igor de Souza from Brazil a couple of months ago. And, uh, he did a double in the English channel and he, as part of his preparation, he said for the, for the previous year, everything was two parts. He'd eat half his dinner, finish. <laughs> then he'd eat the second half of his dinner. He'd watch half of the television show, then the second half of the television show. So literally his preparation for a year was everything was in two halves. Yeah. Um, you you <laughs> also uh, were with, uh, with uh, a crazy Hank Wise, uh, <laughs> who's an incredibly fast swimmer, who uh, is now one of the kings of Catalina. But, but Hank wanted the speed records. Tell us how, how different that is compared to somebody like Antonio. Uh, Hank's all about the experience. I mean, you know, Hank's a groovy dude. I love Hank. Um, and uh, but he wants everybody to have fun. He wants a, a, a crew that is, um, you know, really gels and gets along well and brings something to the, to the team that um, can make it, you know, fun and experience and, uh, for everybody. And, uh, you know, he, he was really, I think too much. So on the, on the, um, just wanting to have, have it be an experience and not really tend to the, the mission at hand. Um, and he was going about it, uh, with a little, I think less, um, focus than he should. And, uh, so for the first few attempts, you know, he, the, the men's record at that time was 805. And he, I wasn't on the first time, but he twice, I was on the second time, the twice got 807. And <laughs> yeah, can you believe that? No, All no. Two <laughs> minutes. So um, after bad, that- Bad um, kayaking probably. Yeah, yeah. Well, I didn't kayak, I was observing. So, I, uh, but, but really it came down to that. It was navigation. And, um, you know, he's using friends that were, you know, navigating and not, you know, not too experienced with uh, navigating a swimmer across and, and I, I could see the track and, uh, um, he, he was really got more prepared each time. Um, obviously learned lessons each time. He's very diligent about, you know, finding, you know, the good conditions or trying to find the, the cur good current, uh, you know, trying to do it on a big, um, flood coming in. And, um, you know, all those things were, uh, you know, on target, but, um, you know, was, I think it was the navigation. And, and from my experience, from my Catalina swims, I had Kevin Esslinger paddle for me the whole way. And he is prone, long distance prone battle border. And he used his GPS on his board. And he, you know, he, he told me, uh, you know, he kept me within, you know, 20 uh, feet of the rum line the whole way. And it's just easier for him to make those adjustments, those slight adjustments than it is a, a bigger boat um, and following a boat. So um, I suggested doing that. And he has, uh, Hank has a good friend uh, that was paddling for swims, um, his main paddler. And, uh, 
and they did they did that and he learned how to use it and and that's what he used the last couple times um and you know it's funny hanks you know used to doing it in such a fa excuse me fast time and uh one of the times maybe it's the fourth swim i was on with him uh it didn't go so well <laughs> you know it ended up being you know relatively still faster than average it was like 11 and a half hour swim and uh you know and I think that really woke him up. He's like, Oh my God, that was long. That was so long. Uh, you know, Are you suggesting Hank had 804 in mind when he got in the water? <laughs> yeah. So with that last time, it, you know, things went off uh, again without a hitch as they need to for that type of swim, you know, going for a speed record. Um, and uh, he was really focused um, and he did not try to do the, uh, the rock climbing finish. He did do the rock climbing start though. So we started at a different point, a little uh, uh, short of a distance uh, at long point on, on Catalina and you have to climb up a rock to get, you know, out of the water. So, you know, monkey Hank, he, he likes to do his rock climbing. So he, that's how he started. He jumped in from the, from the top of the rock. Uh, but at the finish, um, yeah, he, he, uh, he had been wanting to climb up on this other rock, but you know, that takes time sometimes You're dealing with the surge and trying to get up on that rock. And so he did not do that on the, he went into the beach on the, uh, on the uh, final, the 755 swim. And it, it was, it was, you know, it's amazing. It's amazing when people try and try and try and then, you know, finally get it. It was, uh, it was a credible, incredible experience for all of us. Last question for you, Dan. Um, you're wearing the uh, Swim Across America shirt. T tell us a little bit about um, the genesis of that of that project and and your own uh, your own battles with cancer the last few years. Yeah, I actually got involved with Swim Across America uh, several years ago. It's been um, I guess five, six, five years ago, and uh, just doing swim events. And I got involved. Um, Chloe actually had done a Swim Across America event relay with the English Channel. And so she had something going for the England. And I thought, well, let's do something for Catalina. Um, and swim Across America is a, a national organization that does swim events to raise money for uh, cancer research and uh, primarily for pioneering cancer research where they, you can't usually get or it's hard to get uh, national funding or other kinds of grants for these novel ideas. Uh, one of them, um, uh, relevantly, uh, is, um, Im immunotherapy. So, which I had been on. So, um, the, uh, I started working with from across America doing uh, Catalina relays and then did, uh, another English channel relay, uh, to raise money. Um, my own, I, you know, little did I know that, uh, I would end up, um, you know, becoming a recipient uh, in in some regards to you know what they were doing, raising money for for cancer research. Um, yeah, two thousand beginning in two thousand eighteen, uh, I just had a I had a bump and got it excised and had a bump in my leg and uh, got it excised and biopsied and uh, it was malignant melanoma. And so they put me in for the PET scan and came back with, uh, you know, it was, it was, it was all over, it, you know, seven or eight different spots. Um, and, uh, it, you know, it's, it's a, it's a weird thing to, uh, relive or retell. I don't talk about it a lot. Um, kind of, it threw me, you know, it still does. I'm doing, okay, you know, better now. My scans have been clear um, for the past uh, year, over a year. Um, and, uh, you know, I just, it, it, you go, you go in waves, no pun intended, um, in terms of dealing with life and, and everything that's thrown your way and, you know, just still trying to get things done. And, um, you know, I walked around for, couple months feeling like dead mom walking at the start. And the doctor finally said, you know, Dan, uh, uh, you need to make a decision here on what you're going to do. Cause I couldn't decide, you know, what to, what to do in terms of treatment. And there's some choices to be made. And he goes, you know, the cancer's not taking a vacation. So, um, so I actually ended up on, in a study, um, 
that was studying um, uh, a, a new treatment regimen, and uh, and you know it, it it's turned out it's it works it started working fairly quickly um, in terms of reducing all the spots and uh, all the areas, um, and so that gave me some hope, but you know, the treatment, then the side effects start kicking in and, you know, start, I started having to deal with that. And, uh, uh, but you know, I just kept swimming, um, no matter how I felt, um, you know, I felt like shit in the water sometimes. Um, and, uh, before, you know, it was really hard to get up and go. Um, but that was my routine and I just tried to keep that routine going. And once I got in the water, it was always better. Um, you know, even though I didn't always feel good and, and sometimes it wasn't safe <laughs> Had some episodes uh, in that regard. Um, and, uh, but you know, it was like, what the hell I I'm, I'm not going to stop. And, um, you know, a little bit of denial, a little bit of hard headed bullheadedness. Um, and, uh, uh, it just, it just kept me focused on at least, living um and um you know a lot of things there's a lot of collateral damage to go along with it um but uh <clears throat> let's get busy living or get busy dying so um i just started uh um you know thinking about you know i was basically the treatment was going along and, and, um, you know, I had you know, good days, bad days. Um, but it was, it was fairly moderate comparatively to, you know, what potential side effects could have been. So I was managing and dealing, uh, figuring out how to deal with it and, um, manage my side effects. And, uh, uh, you know, this past year or so, I, I just started pushing a little bit. Um, a lot of times when I push in the water, I'd start getting headaches. I start feeling a little nauseous, but I just started pushing through that. Um, just acting, I'd always act like it was, I was just on a long swim. You know, this was, I was in the middle of a channel swim and you know, you don't always feel great. And I, that's kind of was always my visual. Um, I was just in a swim. I was in a swim. I got to keep on going. And, um, and then, you know, when the pandemic hit, I, it's just started thinking, what am I waiting for? You know, why am I uh, tiptoeing around it? Um, and then I really more uh, started to focus more on uh, actually doing a swim. So, you know, I immediately, and I, I had known that I, I would do as I have done in, in previous swims, uh, do it in conjunction with, with a swim across America event and, and fundraise for it. Um, so that wasn't new. Uh, and I, I just decided to um, uh, kind of had some unfinished business out at Anacapa, my last one at the end of 2017, with the Island Hopper. Um, did not do that last leg. I went through between the four islands there, did the channels between each of the four islands in succession, and then uh, didn't finish the channel across. Um, and so that was kind of always in the back burner. But I've, I've kayaked and sported several swims around the island. And as you well know, it's just, it's amazing, you know, um, swimming or going around the island. And it's just cool. I like circumnavigating stuff anyway. And, um, and so that really started becoming the, the, uh, the plan. And uh, it's just, a, it's a beautiful island. It's, it's amazing to go around. It seemed not so daunting at 12 miles, although it's, you know, it's a technical swim, as you know, with the, currents around an island and whatnot um but yeah i just started picking up uh, my training and uh feeling like it's it's possible and doable and so i'm, I'm moving forward and september 10th is my date it's coming up here um, i'm on my last push i'm feeling pretty good um getting some good long swims in and uh getting my mind back you know in the game um and the physical is is kind of just what it is um, but, uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Um, I'm, I'm feeling the jitters again and, and, you know, getting ready for a swim and I'm enjoying that. I'm really saying, oh, I haven't felt that in, in a long time now. And, you know, I, I didn't really anticipate or, or think about that, uh, before, but it's been a nice, uh, it's been a nice build kind of short, you know, uh, only 
really been started a few months ago. Um, but, you know, I feel good. I'm pretty confident. Well, Dan, I want to thank you for all of your contributions to the sport. Um, I'm delighted your recent set of scans have come up with good news, and we wish you, know, you all the best add, on the 10th. I want to add real quick, uh, something really special about this swim is my daughter, Pearl, both my daughters had done Catalina relays before, and those are really special, you know, swim experiences for me. Uh, and, uh, but Pearl, my younger daughter, uh, a couple years ago when she was 15, she swam the Anacapa Channel. And um, so I'm really excited. My older daughter was on my second Catalina in January, so she got that experience. Uh, and my younger daughter, Pearl, is going to be my crew on the Anacapa swim. So I'm really, really excited about that. That'll be cool. She'll get to tell me I kayak for her swim. Now she'll get to tell me from the boat, keep swimming, shut up and keep swimming. So I'm excited. That'll be cool. So Dan, all the best and thank you again. All right. Thanks, Ned.